This is a tutorial on creating documentation for a read the doc site for your tools. Uh, this is useful for assembling details and fancy documentation that you can publish alongside your papers. But even if you don't want to publish a full read the doc, there are some useful features within uh, creating the documentation that can help people more easily understand your code if you're not there to guide them through it. So part one will cover Python doc string, which is what you add to the code itself. Um, so writing doc string is necessary for creating a read the docs, but if that's not your goal, there are some nice features that you still get out of doc string. Uh, and one of those is being able to call uh, the help function on your code. So if I go into uh, my violin folder, and then I start Python, and I import uh, one of my, my uh, code sections, part of, part of my violin package, and then I can just call the help function on that whole file. And what it'll do is it'll give me a quick description of the file, uh, tell me what this particular file does, and then it will list all of the functions within that file and tell me what they do, what arguments they take, and then kind of give more detail about um, how to put input into these functions and what those functions return. Now this can be kind of messy, especially if you have a lot of functions in a single file. So if something like this is a little bit too, um, a little bit too detailed, you can go, you can call help on a specific function within the file itself. Oops. And then it'll give you just that function, just that input. In this case, this function has some uh, defaults. So it lists the defaults for you. It gives you information about what the function does gives you the input parameters and it tells you what what this function returns. So to write the doc string, there are kind of two parts to it. You have the first doc string that introduces the file itself. It can give the name of the file, uh, a description of what this file does. In this case, this file handles all of the in and output functions for violin. And then I just have a, a quick line here saying when I created it, who I created it, where it was created. Um, and then the second part of doc string is the function descriptions. And they all kind of follow the same format where you have this kind of triple quote enclosed chunk at the top of your function where you first have a description of what the function does. And then you have these input parameters and they're always kind of written the same way is you start out with the input variable and then it's type. And then uh, below that you give kind of some brief information on the purpose of that variable, what it does, or you can even you know, put in uh, kind of defaults or expected input like here, it lists the accepted file type. So if you're someone calling that help function, you get automatically, this is what type of input you need. And then, in, the sim in a similar vein, you list your return variables um, where you list the variable, list its type and what, what variable, what purpose you get out of that output variable. Um, so it's, it's relatively simple. It's basically lists of things, lists of your inputs, lists of your outputs, brief descriptions. But uh, as you'll see, as we go into creating read the docs, this small amount of prep work really helps when you're trying to create a doc, a full documentation uh, website. Part two is generating the documentation files with Sphinx. Now the easiest way to do that is to just follow the tutorial on the read the docs website, which I'll attach the link for. And it takes you through all of the steps on how to install Sphinx, how to make your project, how to get everything started. Uh, but just kind of showing you how that looks is you start you start by 
uh, navigating into the directory that your project is in or your code. In this case, I'm working on the violin code, so I'm in the violin folder. And then you're going to make you're going to make a new directory for your documentation files. And then you're going to navigate into that directory and you're going to run Sphinx Quick Start. And it'll take you through some prompts. For the most part, you can just take the default. And I want to put the by uh, the project name, the author name. Uh, you can put either your name or Melody Lava, something Natasha. Here the project comes out. And then the language. And then it will make you some basic uh, intro files for you. So if we go into my violin folder, right here we have this docs2. That's where all my documentation is. And then what you're going to have to go into next is this compfy and this index.rst folder or file. So you're going to want to, so you need to open both of those up. And what these do is they kind of set up creating your HTML file. So this is the index.rst is kind of where you create the home page for it. So here underneath this um, kind of cute little welcome banner is you can put the introduction to your tool here, however long or short you want. Uh, you can add links for publications, uh, anything like that. Now down here in this TOC tree, this is where you're going to put your table of contents. So you might want things like, um, you're obviously going to want all of the coding files that are in uh, in your project folder. So for violin, I have a numeric file, I have a network, I have an in and out, I have a formatting, and I have a scoring. You also are going to probably want to put something like a legal page just to, to declare your funding. And depending on your tool, you can add a tutorials page. So we're going to save that. And then we're going to, going to go into the comp.py file. And here is where you're going to start uh, kind of adding in the code. So right here is where you're going to call your... Uh, call your, your code so that you can have access to those doc strings that you wrote. So I'm actually going to make use of my comp.py file that I already have. Um, for the system path, for me, it's easiest just to put an absolute file so you don't get any errors. And then you're going to put that here. So you're going to have your path to your, uh, your project folder. And then you're going to have all of the files that you wrote doc strings for. And then you have your project information. Extensions, there are some common extensions that are useful whenever you're writing the documentation pages, which we'll cover in part three. So here, these are just some common extensions. Uh, and then down here is where you can kind of pick the, the features, so the default scheme is alabaster, which is just a very plain black and white. We can pick classic, and then that'll give us something to start with. And then now that we've got all of these two files set up, you're going to go back to your terminal, and you're going to make the HTMLs for it. And I'll run Sphinx, and it'll, it's mad about something, uh, because we haven't created the necessary RST files yet. We'll get to that in part three, but it did create um, it did create an HTML file. So if we go back to the folder now under build, we have an HTML folder and we have index.html. And if we open that up, this takes us to our homepage for our documentation website. And this is you know what you wrote. This is welcome to the documentation indices, which we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, that'll come in part three. And over here, all kinds of navigation and searches. So this is how you use Sphinx, Sphinx to create the general files so that you can start writing 
your documentation. Part three is on writing your own RST files. So we talked about the RST files in part two, when we were talking about this index RST and RST, RST stands for restructured text. And these are the files that are gonna help you create your documentation for your read the docs, if that's what you're going for. So we have, if we're just going down our table of contents, we started with numeric. If I make a file called numeric.rst, then I can put a bunch of stuff in it and probably the best resource for how to write in restructured text is the SourceForge website, which I will also put a link for. Uh, and it takes you through all of the options, how to write in restructured text, what it looks like, notes. Uh, there are even ways to do, I think this one includes how to do tables. Yeah, you can make tables. Um, it's just the language that Sphinx uses to create its, to create the read the docs documentation. So if we start in numeric, uh, there's this kind of standard header and this, this right here links to, um, links to your code. And then of course we have the intro, this page details the numeric operation operators of violin. And then here's where the fun part comes in is to give the documentation for the functions. All you have to do is call the module. In this case, it's the numeric module of the violin package. And then auto function, the functions within the numeric code file. Uh, and you can have, add other things like what the dependencies are, especially if somebody else is using it, this, they need to know if they need to have specific libraries installed. Uh, and you can make usage usage examples. Um, but what happens when you do this, what happens when you use this auto function? So what we're gonna do is we're going to, this is a documentation that I have for violin. We're gonna save this in my new docs folder, just so I can copy it over. Uh, and then we're gonna go back to the terminal, make HTML. It's gonna have more warnings because I didn't save everything. Um, but now it's written the numeric. So if we go back to Finder, now we have a numeric.html. If we open that up, it takes us to the page for uh, my numerical outputs functions. And it gives you, you know, the header, the name of the module, detail, and all of this, this whole function page is all written from the doc string. All of it, that all of this section right here came from just these four lines in the restructured text file. Uh, which is great because it's your, you're having to write the documentation only once and then you just get to use it where you need it. And then down here, it gives the dependencies. I like putting links to the dependencies just in case somebody's not familiar with it. And then you could even do um, literal text to kind of show what, what happens when you're using the function. So this is kind of what you should expect if you run the function what you should use, um, gives examples, and it's just a nice way of putting everything on a single page that's kind of somebody else has already done the work for you. Something else that you can do, there you go, it's something called a literal include, um, which depending on your documentation and depending on your project you may or may not want to use, but you can also do something called a literal include where you include specific lines of your code to show how it works. So this is my network file. This is what uh, looks for paths within models, uh, within biological models. So if I go ahead and save a copy of this in my new documentation folder, and then go ahead make HTML, add that to my HTML. And now I have a network.html page. 
And so if I go back to uh, the HTML, now I have network functions, same thing. The functions are automatically included. The dependencies are added. This is a great example because this line of code is too wide. I need to go back and change it. But it's an example of the function being used within another module of violin. And it just includes it exactly how it is in the code, which is kind of why you have to you have to massage your code a little bit if you want to include it to make sure it fits within this uh, box. I think on things it says that this is 70 characters wide, maybe a little bit more than 70. Um, but just that's something to think about. And then there's just a lot that you can do as far as legal. This is, you know, where the funding information goes. Tutorials, you can put tutorials if you want. You can link to videos. You can link to, um, you can link to Bitbucket repositories. You can link to pretty much anything that you want to send people to just using these files. And then all of your documentation is in one central location. Uh, so like I said, this may not be something that you're interested in, but it is a super useful tool to make a different type of documentation, especially if you do want to publish your tool alongside your paper. Uh, and I think even if you don't have, if, even if you have no plans to create or read the docs, um, that using the, the Python doc strings is a really nice way to set up your code so that it's easily read by and understood by other people. Um, so that's all I had for the tutorial. The links for uh, the Sphinx installation and for the restructured text will be shared with this video. They're also in the description box. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I hope that you found this helpful.